Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Monday, all of our guests today, including Dave Tomlinson. And you know what? I have to say this, that Ryan is a bit rattled today. Oh, for sure. On my rundown in front of me, yeah. and I said this earlier, yeah. Jeff Patterson it was coming up hey, just after 11 o'clock. Ryan in charge oh. of our rundown. It's yeah. Dave Tomlinson. You knew the boss was coming yeah. in. You're a little, you're a little rattled, bit nervous. Rattled, nervous. Rattled. But it is uh, Dave hey. Tomlinson. You guys are all over me when I make one little mistake. Look at this. It says Jeff Patterson at 11 o'clock. You got the wrong guy. It's the Canada Day sale, Passant, all month long. Great promos, lots of savings, and great deals. Check them out online at PassantMotors.com and follow them on Twitter at Passant uh, Motors. We're getting uh, several uh, texts into the Laney's OK Tyron Langley oh. inbox uh, regarding uh, August 9th. Uh, yes. And we're talking about the U.S. border reopening to uh, U.S.-Canada border reopening to vaccinated Americans. Double. Obviously, two, two, two. Uh, big news. You have to have a, a double dose, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. obviously, and we don't know at this point about the other way around. Let's bring in uh, Dave Tomlinson to talk about uh, uh, the Canucks after a big NHL uh, weekend, and we look forward to the rest of the week as well. Dave, thanks for doing this. How are you, sir? I'm doing excellent. Now, you can't get me fixed up with Jeff Patterson. One of <laughs> us is a two-time celebrity champion at the Leith Wheeler Stanley Park Open Ooh. in tennis, and the other one isn't. Yeah. Jeff's a pretty Where good tennis go? player, so I, I'm not sure who you're yeah, talking about. Is it that. you or, or, or Jeff? I've, uh, I've, I, I, I would run Jeff around the court. I would run oh. Kmart around the court. Wow. Blake would have to wrap his knee. Um, untouchable. Wow. And I, wow. Uh, I, I usually play twice a year. So uh, another uh, side to Dave Tomlinson we didn't know, but we know you're a tremendous athlete, former NHLer, but also fabulous tennis player. Um, when you talk about uh, people who are pretty good at hockey, what do you know about Jason Dickinson? Well, I really – I think this is a smart, proactive move by the Vancouver Canucks, and it always begs the question why they haven't been this – in front of opportunities before, but for Jason Dickinson, I mean, he fills the need. And I remember the last hit I did with you guys two weeks ago, one of the thoughts about what can Vancouver to do to improve themselves. And we had said, Hey, they need a, a third line centerman they can count on. And I don't think they have one within the organization was my last sentence with you guys. And of course they need to improve their defense. They've done that with uh, Dick Dickinson. And the thing that I like about him is that he talks about being able to have more offense available, but he does have the defensive side down pat. I mean, he knows his role. He's one of these guys who put up points in junior, but then had to be more responsible as an NHL player to get the ice time and has really um, found that, that hard edge style to play against. And that is now his calling card. I mean, he, he played in the OHL for Guelph. He actually went head to head with Bo Horvat for a bunch of years mm -hmm. uh, between uh, the storm and uh, the nice. London night. So, you know, Bo's going to know obviously a lot about him as well, but the, the Vancouver Canucks have done themselves well with uh, Jason Dickinson. And so now it's a matter of uh, looking on their blue line and seeing if they can't make some improvements there through what's going to be a pretty, Pretty wacky week of uh, yes. hockey transactions, I would say. Well, lots of fun, and we forget that the entry draft is coming up at the uh, end of the week. Hi, Moore, uh, McEwen, Lind, uh, Gadjevich, uh, other than uh, Holpe, which uh, younger forward should the uh, Kraken see as a fit? I liked the game of Matthew Highmore more than any of the other players uh, outside of Holpe, of course. Hmm. Um, you know, younger you know, two-way up-and-comers, you could say. I know he's a little bit older. Uh, both Lind and Highmore aren't going to cost you a lot. Uh, you know, Highmore's already on the books for a 725 next year and then is an RFA. So there's, I think there's, he's the better option because he's going to be less expensive. Uh, he plays a high-energy game. He's already got that built in. And so that would be, uh, if I'm the Seattle Kraken, because they're going to, be taking a lot of players that are bringing in some pretty big salaries that they're going to have to worry about or deal with or manage. So that's the direction I would go if I wasn't taking a goaltender. But I'll echo what Thomas Drance had said. It, it looks like the MO for Seattle is to load up on goaltenders, 
you know, they'll kind of own the market as best they can in that regard and then flip off the ones to other teams for maybe some, uh, you know, fill some voids that they weren't able to get through this expansion draft and through the regular draft. And, uh, I mean, it's an interesting time for Ron Francis. I mean, he literally is holding a lot of the cards and almost holding back what other teams are able to do. So uh, I see Holtby as the smarter choice for the Seattle Kraken. And, of course, there's some other goaltenders with uh, bigger names and bigger salaries out there as well. Dave, if, if Dickinson's your third-line center, Beagle, I'm here, is going to be safe as fourth-line center, then you got to make a decision on Sutter and Boyd. What do you do with those two? Well, I don't think that Brandon Sutter is going to sign – for little enough to make it worthwhile to have him as your utility guy somewhere. Uh, Boyd, for me, is, is still a player that's trying to find his upside and is going to cost you way less. I mean, the Canucks, unless they can do something uh, cap gymnastics-wise between now and when the season starts, you know, they're still trying to carve out some cap space for themselves. So, you know, Brandon Sutter is the type of player that will go to another organization as a less expensive uh, third-line guy for them that's going to play the same type of role he did here in Vancouver. But I don't think the Canucks, when I say can't afford him, uh, can't afford to bring him back at a number that makes sense. When you look at Seattle and all the players available, and we were kicking around that uh, this this morning, is there a t- yeah. you think they could be better in Vancouver next year? Yes, I do. And, and one of the things when I listen to you guys uh, talking about some potential players that they could take, one of the angles that I would go with, if, if it's coming uh, around to picking somebody off Calgary, I mean, you take Mark Giordano, right? Uh, a couple of things with him. You know, he's, he's uh, solid, obviously, defensively. You're not bogged down for a bunch of years. He's only got the, the next year at 6.75. So you improve your defense. Yeah, it comes at a cost. But you also take away from Calgary's defense. They've got a yeah. void to fill. Yep. And if you do that in Anaheim, you take, like, I think Adam Henrique has still got some hockey left in him. He was their best centerman last year, Ryan gets last of the UFA. And then you take the best piece out of Anaheim. You know, you're building your team. You're paying a little bit more. But look at free agency. You're going to pay way more in free agency to, to get uh, comparable guys. So if you're shrewd, you'll start picking off players from the teams that are going to be around you in the standings in the Pacific Division to weaken them, improve your team, and better your odds for making the playoffs, which I think the Seattle Kraken will do. Dave, switching gears, how much game does Alex Edler have left as he hits the open market? I think there's still uh, two years of very good hockey. As a, I mean, depending on the team, but he would be looked at on another team as you know their their solid middle uh, six defenseman. Uh, you know, he's you have to limit his minutes, and that's what the Canucks talked about doing this season and weren't able to do this season uh, for injuries or otherwise to other players. I I still think Alex Edler has two more years of hockey in him at least. Uh, But when he's saying he wants to test the open market, and I understand that uh, for him, this is, you know, usually it was just like, Oh, Edler's going to be back. You know, he's, he's not hard to negotiate with. He he doesn't want to go anywhere else. Like, does he really want to win? He just wants to hang around Vancouver I think at this point he's going to try and uh, cherry pick a spot that would balance a good salary with a better opportunity to go further in the playoffs than he's had here in Vancouver. Just looking at your uh, hockey DB page, uh, Dave, and when you played, were, were you ever involved in uh, an expansion draft? Do you have any expansion draft stories from from your career? Uh, not ones in which I was picked up or okay. left exposed. Uh, you know, I went and signed with the Florida Panthers. In fact, they'll tell you this, Donnie. I had the opportunity to sign as a Vancouver Canuck hmm. when I ended up uh, signing with the Florida Panthers. The Canuck uh, situation was the farm club was in the AHL. I wanted to play in the IHL because I was going to be a, you know up-and-down guy. And uh, the money in Florida and the promises they made were, were better than I could get from the Vancouver Canucks. And then I get to Florida and uh, everything changed. Yeah. <laughs> they, they lied to me. Can you believe that? Yeah. Oh, that never happens in hockey. No. Yeah. Well, you know, you're from Vancouver, Florida. It's not that far away, so it was a good choice. Uh, I had a good time in Cincinnati playing for the Cyclones. That's true. Take a look at the numbers there. Yes, lots yeah. Of, lots of fun. 100. Playing with the one and only Paul Lawless was yeah. my winger. Former Canuck. 
Um, 110 points, 94, 95, and 96 points and 95, 96. Not bad. Hey, Dave, thanks for this. We'll talk to you in a bit. Appreciate it. I'm looking forward to uh, talking with you guys again when you get back from your hiatus. Uh, since this is my last hit with you guys until that time. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of the summer. Thanks so much, Dave. You bet.